Welcome to the Rum Revival. My name is Arminder, and today I'm doing a blind tasting of these five rum samples that are identical, except for the fact that they were each finished in different casks. So I love trying and comparing rums that are pretty much identical, but with a change to one variable. Things like that can be really great educational moments to kind of see how and to what extent those changes can affect the rum. So these five samples here that I'm gonna be blind tasting were sent to me by the folks at Rolling Fork. Now, Rolling Fork is an independent bottler out of Indiana. However, they do more than just source rum from third-party brokers and distilleries and then just bottle it. Their main focus is to source aged rums and finish them in various unique cast types. They've released rums finished in all sorts of different casks with varying char and toast levels. They've obviously released rums that were finished next whiskey and next bourbon cast, but also rye cast, Oloroso sherry, port wine, and even Amberana. You name it, and they probably have some rum aging in it. Now, in terms of the actual mechanics of finishing, see, when a cask is emptied, there may be some residual liquid that has been absorbed into the wood. So when a rum is added to the cask, that absorbed liquid, whether it's bourbon or sherry or whatever, some of it will slowly begin to integrate in with the rum. So essentially finishing or secondary maturation helps impart additional flavors and aromas to the rum. It marries and alters the existing flavors of the rum with those of the wood of the finishing cask and the liquid that was previously held in it. So in this way, Rolling Fork adds their own touch and personality to each of the rums that they source and put out. Now, depending on how long the finishing lasts and what the temperature is, as well as the wood type and what the previous liquid was that the cask held, the secondary maturation can drastically or just ever so slightly change the flavor and aroma of the rum. And that's exactly what we're going to explore right here with these five samples. So in terms of the base rum here, they're all the same eight-year-old pot calm blend from Foursquare in Barbados. After getting their hands on the rum, Rolling Fork splits it into a number of different barrels to finish. Now, the eight-year-old rum is entered into those finishing casks at 57% ABV or 114 proof. So when these samples were pulled out of the barrels, they were just 10 days shy of a full year in their respective finishing casks. So I'm going into this having no idea what each one of these samples were finished in, but I do have a printout here with all the detail. At the end of the tasting, I'll reference it, but throughout the tasting, as I'm kind of giving you notes and whatnot, I'll have it listed on the screen exactly as to which type of cask it is. Are we gonna see a drastic or a subtle difference between all of these samples. I have no idea, but let's find out. All right, so I've got the five rums here poured and ready to go. Immediately that kind of classic note of like caramel that I often get in a lot of Four Squares rums, but it's also not just like caramel, it's a little like burnt, like a burnt caramel, maybe like a burnt, slightly smoky caramel. Though I am also picking up a little bit of coconut, which is something I often will get in Four Squares rums. And even like a little bit of like nuts, like a nuttiness, but not like a sherry nuttiness, just like nuts. It's a nice nose. All right, let's uh, give it a sip. That's good. That's four square, for sure. Undeniably, it's almost like a slightly stronger barrel char than I'm used to with four squares rums. Getting a stronger cinnamon note, cinnamon, cinnamon syrup. Now, that's actually delicious. This is a four square rum that's a little, a little wilder, like it's, Still kind of the four square you, you know and love, but it's wearing like a, a leather jacket. Actually this one, compared to this one, the first one I'm getting a little bit more of that char, like I'd mentioned. Here, I'm not getting a lot of that burnt or smoky note, that char note that I got in here. I'm not really picking that up here. This seems like a lighter caramel. There's even like a little bit of fruitiness, at least relative to this one. Maybe like a bit of like stone fruit. All right, let's uh, give it a sip. Mm. Immediately, it's far smoother and silkier in terms of like how it feels on the palate compared to this one. Or this almost feels like a little more elegant. Not that elegant is better than being like rough and tumbled and wearing a leather jacket, but relative to this one, just it's a little bit more like demure and softer. So yeah, definitely less of that burnt smoky caramel, less of like that cinnamon note. Really not picking up a whole lot of cinnamon here. But what I am picking up is a little bit of fruitiness, maybe like a little bit of pear. So kind of the thing that really kind of immediately stands out is bigger emphasis on like maybe vanilla. Like I wasn't really getting a whole lot of vanilla here, but here, yeah, vanilla and maybe even like a touch of citrus. Yeah, almost in a way, vanilla and citrus kind of reminds me of like a bit of like a creamsicle. Yeah, that's, that's a fun nose. All right, let's give it a sip. I'm getting like honey, a little bit of citrus as well. You know where I said this was kind of silky and and kind of like soft on the palate. Different though than this one. This, it feels like there's like a bit of honey gliding 
across my palette. This one didn't quite feel that way. This one felt more of like lighter caramel, maybe. Getting a lot of dried fruits on this one. Prunes, figs, apricots, with like a touch of baking spices. All right, let's give it a sip. Okay, getting dried fruit on the palate and, and some chocolate, actually. Yeah, and chocolate's not necessarily a note I've picked up. These three, it, and that chocolate note's somewhere between like dark chocolate and milk chocolate, kind of in the middle. Now on the nose for this last one, I get like a bit of mustiness actually, like a musty nutmeg. All right, let's uh, give it a sip. Chocolate on this as well, but it's less dark and less dry. And a little bit more of like a slightly lusher, more milk chocolate. Now, some of that cinnamon actually returns on this one that I was kind of getting towards here. A little bit of earthiness to this one as well. Slightly earthy dirtiness, I guess, earthy dirt. All right, so having sampled through them, here's what I'll say. Kind of across the board, not one of them was like a complete crazy outlier or a 180 from kind of the standard traditional four square kind of rum profile, which kind of makes sense given that, you know, eight ninths of its life was kind of in the same cast type uh, in Barbados. And it's only in one ninth of its life where it kind of slightly goes in a different direction given the cast that it's aged in. So, you know, I wasn't expecting anything super radical, but you know, there are clearly unique flavor profiles in each one of them, both on the aroma and the palette, which I think was very, very cool. If I had to make some guesses, I don't think I'm gonna guess what these are, I will guess what they aren't, right? Like I don't think any of them were necessarily maybe sh like a sherry, and I don't think necessarily any of them were like Ambarana, although this one, the cinnamon, to me at least, kind of maybe hinted in that direction, it really wasn't that. So I, what does that actually mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a lot of bourbons and whiskeys maybe, we'll see. So I have here, a printout of the email that the folks at Rolling Forks sent me that you know basically explains which one is which. This first one here is from barrel 4006. And that is Booker's Bourbon from Jim Beam. Okay, uh, look, I'm gonna be honest here. I, I'm not a bourbon guy, I'm not a whiskey guy. Obviously, I'm a rum guy. Like I know enough, like at a very high, high level, but when someone tells me that this is finished in a Booker's cask, I don't know what that means. Like I, I know Booker's, I've probably had Booker's maybe like two or three times in my whole life. Again, not a bourbon guy. All I know is that this one, more so than the others, felt to me at least a stronger emphasis on the char with a little bit of a stronger cinnamon note. So there you go. Okay, for the second one, we have barrel number 4010. So let's see what that is. And that is Four Roses OESV. The interesting thing, the OESV of it all, uh, I actually kind of sort of know a little bit about this. Four Roses has released like a box set of like, I don't know, let's say six to eight different small uh, bottlings of different bourbons that all had different letters in them. I was like, are those marks? And I want to say roughly around the same time as the Eight Marks collection came out from Hamden, that Four Roses set uh, also came out and I dug a little bit into it. I think the O, E, S, and V imply certain things. Like, I don't know if one of the mark, one of the letters might imply that it's a certain mash bill. Like Four Roses probably has a couple different mash bills. And I think one of the other letters in the O, E, S, V is the yeast strain that is used. So in combination, they're able to create with different mash bills, different yeast strains to create different types of bourbons. And that's kind of, you know, that's, if. That's not a mark, I don't know what is. All right, the third one that had like a strong kind of honeyed note to it is uh, barrel number 4012. And that is Wild Turkey. All right, I know Wild Turkey. It is specifically a satinwood bourbon, which I guess maybe is a type of cast type or type of wood. I'm not entirely sure, I'll be honest. But I do know Wild Turkey. I mean, not enough to be like, I can tell you what Wild Turkey tastes like or, you know, their flavor profile. But I know wild turkey, I know 101, I know rare breed. So I guess I'm now interested having tried this and that kind of honeyed note and that vanilla that I was getting on the nose, I wonder if there are certain wild turkey expressions that have some of those characteristics. I don't know, but I'm kind of now interested in finding out. So the next one, the fourth one is barrel number 4020. 
and that is Starlight Distillery. This is a double barrel bourbon from, uh, and the barrel itself is a Canton Cooperage. I believe that's the name of the Cooperage. And this is a five year air seasoned cask. What does a hair seasoned cask exactly mean? I'm not gonna front, I don't, I don't know. Now, the Starlight of it all, they are a distillery in Indiana. I know about Starlight because they're in Indiana. My folks actually live in Indiana. Now, the double barrel bourbon of it all, I think implies that it's double oaked. So you went from new charred American oak to new charred American oak to add a little bit more of a big punch of that barrel quality to it. And then this four square rum was added into that second cask of that newly charred American oak cast. I don't know if that means you would get a stronger emphasis on more traditional like oak, caramel, vanillas. But with this, again, I get I get a chocolates. I get dried fruits. I get caramel, although I guess caramel, yeah, that, that is definitely bourbon. So that leaves us with the last one and that is barrel number 4036. And that is, okay, this is really interesting. There's a lot involved here. First, a red wine cask then that cask held bourbon, then it was recharred, and then it was used to finish more bourbon at Starlight Distillery. Okay, so that's cool. And then it was used to uh, finish this rum here. So, you know, I'm not picking up like a whole crazy bit of like red wine, but potentially I could see that mustiness kind of leaning in the direction of the red wine. I can see a little bit of that chocolate kind of maybe potentially coming from the red wine. What I think Rolling Fork should do is release kind of like a set, you know, of a bunch of different rums or it's the same base rum, basically this, right? Release something where you get, it's all the same base rum, but each is a different finish. I think that would be so cool. I know I would love something like that and I, I maybe you would as well, you know? And ideally what would be really cool is if they included the base rum, like the rum that was only aged eight years uh, from Foursquare and hadn't had any finishing, and then you could try that and compare it to the other ones in the set that had an extra year of finishing in all sorts of different casts. I think that would be such a cool, fun, educational experience, a learning experience, and a great drinking experience. Now, if you're intrigued by any or all of the flavor profiles of these samples, then you're in luck because Rolling Fork releases a bunch of single cast Barbados rums throughout the year. Now potentially some of these might be released this year or they might be aged another year or two before the release or some of them might even be moved into another cast type for some additional aging. But you don't really have to wait for any of that because there's a bunch of it already out on the market. Now since these are single cast releases, each one tends to be exclusive to a particular bar or retailer. For example, I have here a selection from Smuggler's Cove in San Francisco. This is started off as a eight year old Barbados rum and then it was aged an additional 16 months by Rolling Fork in a Pappy Van Winkle cask. And it is delicious. Now if you're interested in checking out exclusive behind the scenes content, where I do kind of off the cuff stuff, I do blind tastings, things like this actually, frankly. If you like this video and you wanna see more of that, then consider checking out and supporting me on my Patreon page. I have all sorts of first impressions videos where I crack open a bottle for the very first time and give you my gut reaction. I do all sorts of bonus footage, things I can't really put in the video because the video is too long, uh, that kind of stuff. If you're vibing with what I'm doing, then I think you might like what I have on Patreon. And lastly, I'm curious, do you have a favorite cask finish type or one that you really hate? Maybe you love sherry finishes, but you hate Amarana finishes, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.